Welcome to our shark after show. First question, tell us about when you first saw Jaws. Where were you and what effect did it have on you? Have you seen the movie? I have. <laughs> when, when did you first see it? I was on a date with a girl in a movie theater where I saw it, yeah. Like when it came out? Yeah. Uh, I went and saw it when it came back out in the theaters in like 1980. I was like 13 or 14 years old. Um, and I didn't last past him finding the, uh, the rotted face and the boat underwater. I ran screaming from the theater. All right, mm. moving on. Next, next question. One. Why, does, uh, why does that academy place have so many dead sharks and why are they so old? The, the, the Academy of Sciences? Yes. Emphasis on sciences? Yes. Because they store the fish for research. They've been storing fish there from San Francisco Bay and all over the world for over a hundred and something, 140 years. Oh. It is like the third largest collection of fish specimens on the planet. That's why they have all those old specimens, because they save them for posterity. You know, lots of things are going extinct, and when they do, we need samples so we can see what came before, and that's one of the repositories. Let's see, next question. Why didn't the shot on the angle open up the tank, do you think? How thick are these things? Um, well, they're they're about, what, half an inch thick aluminum? In the on thinnest the, part. In the thinnest part. In the thickest part, it's like over an inch at the yeah. bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those tanks are made to be handed out to the public and, <laughs> and abused. How much abuse can this tank take? I ran a scuba diving business for a while, and, and I remember, uh, you know, uh, down in St. Thomas, we used to load up trucks to take people out to the beach, uh, and, and uh, you know, there, uh, there were times when I re recall seeing a whole kind of truckload of tanks break free and come roll, bouncing down the, the road onto oh my the pavement. God. Nothing happened. It was all right. <laughs> uh, they're I mean, really you had tough. soiled underpants, but besides that. Next question. Why did the 50 cal cause the rocket to go through the gullet? Was it weakened by then? Um, was it weakened by then? No. No, 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 no. It's just that actually, again, it, the, the, the holes we made with bullets basically became rocket nozzles. You have a pressurized chamber, you make a tiny little hole it comes out of, and there's an optimal relationship between a rocket nozzle and its propellant. And it just, it turned out in this case, the 50 cal's larger hole was a more optimal rocket nozzle for short distance penetration of the shark's internal organs. Next question, how epic was that explosion? Um, it was well, a nice one. Yeah, it, it was 930,000 joules of energy. Oh. If anybody knows what that actually translates it's to. A and, treasure chest full of jewels. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, next question. Uh, what did you enjoy more, testing a movie, movie myth with your shark or testing real world myths with real sharks? I much prefer the real sharks. Oh, yeah. They're just, it's so cool and amazing to get to show up for work and go hang out with sharks. That's crazy awesome. Maybe stating the obvious, but I think we've, well, come to the right place. Yeah, and it's almost, it still is surreal, even though we've done it yeah. a number of times. It's like standing on the back of the boat uh, on the dive platform and uh, looking at Throwing the water boiling, boiling with sharks and then jumping right yep. into them. And you're like, that's fine, that's gonna work. <laughs> this happens every day. <laughs> Yeah, it's totally, it's been, a, it, like, doing the Shark Weeks on this show have been one of the high points of all these 13 years. Yeah. Next question. Sorry to be a pedant, but I noticed on the wetsuits, a rogue apostrophe. It should be Stewart's Cove and not Stuart Coves. Ah! Eh, wrong. It's not Stewart's Cove. It's not a place that is a cove. It's a dude whose name is Stuart Cove. Yes. And so, the apostrophe is correctly placed because it's Steward Cove's Dive Bahamas. That's the name of his business. Next question is, Jamie's middle name really danger? If not, what is it? Uh, Actually, early on, somebody made the joke, his name was James Earl Heineman, and Jamie got an, uh, was it an honorary doctorate? No, it was an award. It was an award from the Sigma Psi Society. Yeah. Uh, and they, they awarded it to James Earl Heineman. And we're the only two in the room that knew that wasn't his real middle name, which happens to be... Franklin. There you go. I liked Earl, though. 
Earl's good. Yeah. Uh, next question. What's with Adam's ears? Oh, it's such a long story. Uh, basically, because my eustachian tubes don't work from a congenital condition, I have a full tympanoplasty in my left ear, and I'm going to get one in my right. That means they rebuild the entire eardrum from scratch, which has worked beautifully in my left ear. What does one make an eardrum out of? Um, you use muscle fascia from uh, from one of the muscles right here in my in my head, um, and they stretch it where the eardrum grows, and then a new eardrum grows right across that. It's totally amazing. Next question. The smell of death was pretty incredible. Were you surprised at this result? Totally. Here we go. Mouth and clip. Awesome, so dead shark. Three, two, one, and... Oh! Wow! That was a very specific reaction. I mean, it was, like, instantaneous. The moment you cracked the seal, I saw the sharks, like, shimmering to get the freak out of the way. That was yeah. mind, it was a mind-blowing result. I mean, I, I don't know if it was as clear to you, but, like, Jamie was, had sharks, like, twisting around him, like some sort of Ray Harryhausen effect, and then he cracked the cap on the shark repellent, and he instantly had a, bu a shark-free bubble, like, 10 feet in diameter around him that grew bigger as the stuff dissipated in the water until it was, like, 60 feet, no sharks around us. It was amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's by far, of all the stuff we've tested on this show, on sharks, the most definitive and clearly that works result we've gotten from sharks. Well, uh, this next question kind of applies towards that. If you went back to South Africa and were swimming at dawn uh, at that seal island, would you be happy if you were armed with dead shark smell? <laughs> Here's the reason no. At Seal Island, this is where the great whites see you coming from a long way away. They build up speed. They crush into you at like 45 miles per hour, and then they breach their entire multi-ton body out of the water and slam you into it in order to stun you so that they can eat you at their leisure. Something tells me that essence of dead shark isn't going to stop them along their, their freight train towards you. Yeah, it's not like they can hit the brakes. Yeah, they'll be like, whoa, 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 hold on. They're not going to, no, I don't think so. Coming up. Uh, last question. Here's a myth. The fewer sharks in the ocean, the better. They're nasty. Would you test that? That's the wrong, most wrong-headed thing in the world. Uh, they're, they're far from uh, nasty or dangerous to humans. They're totally important and vital parts of the ecosystem. So the ocean needs as many of them as possible, and we need to stop killing them for every reason that people kill them. You know, it's telling that the author of Jaws, Peter Benchley, spent the last part of his life lobbying and trying to raise awareness that sharks need our protection and need to be allowed to live their lives hassle and human free out there in the oceans where they are a very important part of the food chain, i.e. at the top of it. Where they will stay, hopefully. Yeah. I think that's it. That's yeah. it? That was the last question? That's it for tonight's Shark After Show. Thanks very much. See you next time. Happy swimming.